So here we are at the intake of Black Rock Stream off the Lemon Wall Range. We're about 150 metres downstream from the Tate. We chose this location because it was relatively confined uh, and it would fit the flume better and also no bedrock. It was nice, uh, nicely dug clay. So the actual flume itself, out of plastic, uh, relatively lightweight, it's bulky but uh, relatively easy to move with one, two obviously a lot better. But if you didn't have far to go, you, one person could handle it. So we manoeuvred it into place here. Um, you see we dug footings at each end, which take the two wing walls at each side of the tailwater and headwater ends of the flume. We've allowed ourselves a wider footing at the front just to handle any approach velocities uh, and form a ramp at the start of the flume. We plumbed up the PT in this case uh, into the moulded intake, it's one on each side of the flume. Just bunged up the, uh, the opposite side. This is ideal, ideally suited really for a stilling, a small stilling well on the side here which would give uh, I think the best accuracy. Uh, we can also use ultrasonic, the radar maybe hanging over the top pointing down. So these footings here we filled with concrete right round each side of the plastic so it's uh, well bedded in both ends and also filled the holes with concrete about a third full of the whole plastic flume itself to weigh it, weigh it down. If you had access for a concrete truck of course you could do this a lot quicker than uh, mixing it by hand as we have here. One advantage of uh, filling it slowly is that um, you may minimise any bulging that could occur in the plastic. So you're just probably aware that um, the extra weight coming in could have pushed the sides out, but it seemed to handle it pretty well. So you can see the concrete here, the first lot in the, in the base at each end and also it's approximately a third fill on the inside and we'll just top this up with gravel and we'll put clay on the other in between sides so that we can get access to those intake if necessary just making sure the concrete's bright around these two wing walls at each end and see we've formed a ramp and a wedge up the side there just to uh, just to help with the water flows. So we've set the whole flume about a hundred millimetres higher than the race floor bed just so that we've got a, a little bit more fall off the back end. Um, this is due to the race being very flat in this case and it's not falling away fast. So we've ended up with about a hundred mil rise at the front headwater end and a two hundred millimetre as you can see here at the tail end also falling onto a paving stone just to help take up some of the energy before it goes back into the, the race. So about 200 millimetres here. As you'll see soon when it flows it uh, worked quite well. So about a hundred millimetre rise from the floor at the, at the top end. So the instruments have now been installed, PT, and we've opened the race gate at the top end. This took about 10 minutes to fill. Uh, the flows are fairly small. We didn't measure it on this day, but uh, the, the river itself, the creek that we're taking it from, was fairly low. So once it had stabilised, uh, we actually got to see what 
flow was like at the back end and the fall was quite nice, it's quite aerated and did form quite a big head pond above but you can see it restricting here and working as it's supposed to and flowing away quite nicely from the tailwater.